après neuf ans de ce premier ministre. After nine years of this liberal government, the cost of housing in Quebec has skyrocketed. In the Saguenay, Lac Saint Jean region, the cost of a house has gone up by 76 percent. In Trois Rivières, the cost has gone up by $190,000. And in Drummondville, the cost has gone up by $204,000. That's an increase of 124 percent. Meanwhile, what has the Prime Minister done? He has broken our system. He has printed billions and billions of dollars, and he's preventing new constructions. Will he do something about these policies? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader is using these challenges that are facing Quebecers and all Canadians to feed his own political career, but he's not offering any solution to the problem. That's why we have invested $900 million with the government of Quebec to speed up housing construction. We will continue to work with municipalities and the province of Quebec to ensure that there is more housing, rentals, homes, affordable housing. We will continue to work hard while he picks fights with the mayors of Quebec City and Montreal. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Here we go. I have already published my common sense plan which is to offer incentives to municipalities to issue permits, cut red tape, free up lots for construction, and to cut taxes for those who are building housing throughout the country while also controlling population growth so that it's under the growth in housing supply. That is my common sense plan. Will the prime ministers let Will the Prime Minister let Quebecers choose that common sense plan with an election? The Honourable Prime Minister, we all know that the Leader of the Opposition doesn't care about expert opinion, and it's pretty obvious why. All housing and economic experts have looked at his plan and have said very openly that it is gobbledygook. There is nothing in his plan that will do anything about the housing crisis. Once again, he has just offered empty slogans, not real solutions. Quebecers, like all Canadians, deserve a government that will continue to invest in housing, to invest in their future, instead of simply offering cuts on austerity, which is all that the Conservative leader knows. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, the real experts here are people who build housing. Quebec's Builders Association have stated that my plan is the best to get housing built. It will encourage construction, it will encourage municipalities to cut red tape. And in and on the other hand, we see the results of nine years of this liberal government where the cost of housing has gone up more sharply than in any other G7 country. And it's the second worst in the 36 OECD countries. Will the Prime Minister finally adopt a common sense plan like ours? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, this Conservative leader's approach has been to make personal attacks against the mayors of Montreal and Quebec City, insult the intelligence of Quebecers who have elected pro progressive municipal governments who are investing in affordable housing, who are investing in a better future. He is simply running around insulting people, trying to score political points. We work hard every day in partnership with municipalities and provinces to deliver concrete results. Housing, economic growth, results for everyone. Canada had to issue an emergency rate cut to, sal to salvage a collapsing economy, an economy that is falling, that has fallen more in the last five years. I mean, it's true. Other G7 country, our GDP per capita is smaller today than it was a decade ago, while the American has grown by 18 percent. The gap between the Canada and U.S. per person GDP is now at its worst in a century, leading to homelessness, helplessness and hunger on the streets. Why won't the Prime Minister call a carbon tax election so that we can fix the economy he broke?
the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Every now and then, Mr. Speaker, despite all his efforts, we see a little edge of the tinfoil hat peeking out once again from the Leader of the Wow. As he continues his attacks on the Bank of Canada, on the independence of our financial What a situation. dismissive uh, the reality is, freaking Mr. piece Speaker, of garbage. hard as a government to bring down inflation so that the Bank of Canada can bring down interest rates uh, faster than just about any other country uh, of our peer countries around the world because we know that bringing down interest rates is what's going to help Canadians even as we continue to invest in programs like dental and pharmacare and child care that the Conservatives are voting against and delivering for Canadians. The Honourable Member from Edmonton, Strathcona. That was an appalling answer, and the Prime Minister needs to sanction Ben Gavir and Netanyahu. Here, here. Mr. Speaker, 650,000 Albertans don't have a family doctor. In Edmonton, hospital wards are 155% overshot. But instead of addressing this crisis, Daniel Smith and the Alberta Conservatives are going to Uberize the problem. Shame. So, enough is enough. Can you tell us? When will Albertans be able to deserve the health care? When will this government finally stand up for public health care in this country? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I agree entirely that Conservative governments across this country have weakened our public health care system, and that is why uh, we are continuing uh, to demand investments in public health care, investments that will create more family doctors, that will reduce wait times. We've put money on the table for provinces willing to step up and actually deliver clear data and results to Canadians. We're going to continue to defend Canada's public health care system from those conservative uh, ideologues and premiers and politicians who want to weaken our health care system and not deliver for Canadians. For nine years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the human misery that Canadians are suffering. There are now 1,400 homeless encampments in Ontario alone. The City of Toronto admits that it's run out of homeless shelter space and will have to turn people out into the snow throughout the fourth oh my coming God. winter. There's a Facebook group called the Dumpster Diving Network and people are lined up in the rain for hours for rotten potatoes. Is this the Great Depression? Yeah. Wow. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we've all seen the cosy relationship that the Leader of the Opposition has with a number of Conservative Premiers across the country. I would ask him to use his significant influence over those Conservative Premiers to ask them to accept the money that the Federal Government is putting on the table to help with homeless encampments. A month ago, we asked each province and territory to partner with us to help find shelter for those living in encampments. Alberta, Ontario and Saskatchewan have not yet formally responded to us to end encampments in their respective jurisdictions. I ask the Leader of the Opposition if he cares about this indeed to stop playing politics and start out. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The problem with that blame game is that in fact the worst homeless encampments are in NDP governed British Columbia. Yep. In fact, what the Prime Minister has done is take the radical socialist policies that led to those encampments and those massive overdose crises nationwide. Take, for example, the drug dens. The Prime Minister continues to push taxpayer-funded opioids on the population, which has led to 47,000 overdose deaths, more than died in the Second World War as Canadians. Will he reverse these policies? Oh, Prime Minister. I just have to pause for a moment on the incredible irony of watching the Leader of the Opposition in this House accuse anyone of playing the blame game. He has made his entire career as leader and 20 years as a parliamentarian about playing the blame game. It's about time he started taking responsibility for the members of his caucus and take responsibility uh, for putting forward solutions that will actually help Canadians instead of offering cuts uh, and pointing fingers and empty slogans.
Hey, at least they maintained their enthusiasm for the whole thing. The NDP liberal government is acting like, quote, a drug lord. Mm -hmm. Those are the words of Masha Krupp, a mother who lost her daughter to an overdose. That daughter, Larissa, was given taxpayer-funded opioids. Now her son is addicted to the same government-provided drugs. This radical policy, which this Prime Minister pioneered and expanded with the help of the NDP, has taken thousands of lives. Will he stop acting like, quote, a drug lord and put the money into treatment and recovery? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are using all the tools at our disposal to save lives and keep communities safe for everyone. Meanwhile, Conservatives are choosing to use struggling people as political props to promote fear and spread misinformation. From the very beginning, we've been there to work on an evidence-based, compassionate and public safety approach. We have and always will be there to work with provinces and territories on approaches focused on saving lives and ending this crisis. I'm, I'm going to ask all members... Do it. Mute the mic. Do it. All members not to take the floor unless recognized by the speaker. I've, I've asked the honourable member from... Mute it. Halton Hills, who's a very... Mute the mic. ...member in this house, please. Not take the floor. Come on. Not take Mute the, the mic. Floor, uh, unless recognized by the speaker. He's read my petition. Yes, son of a gun. Mute the mic. That goes both ways. Mute the mic, I dare you. The Honourable Member, uh, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. After nine years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost, crime, or corruption. <laughs> we now know that his deficit this year will be $7 billion, no dollars, or 20% bigger than his finance minister claimed in the budget only six months ago. Where's the money going? Well, we know that $400 million was directed by Liberal appointees to their own companies in what involved 186 conflicts of interest. Now the Prime Minister has paralyzed Parliament for two weeks to cover it up and deny police the evidence. Will he hand it over to the cops so that we can put the bad guys in jail and get our money back? Yeah, 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 yeah. Before I invite the uh, Right Honourable Prime Minister to respond, I'm going to ask the Honourable Member from Timmins James Bay to please not take the floor unless recognized by the Speaker. The, on- the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we just heard a very impassioned and understandable outburst from the member for Halt- Welding and Halton Hills, who is concerned about foreign interference and the impact. What is... What is Something He's getting heckled. That worries me is that he can't have confidence that his leader, the leader of the Conservative Party, is actually going to do the work to take foreign interference seriously and get the security clearance necessary to be able to protect the members of his caucus from foreign interference. Why <laughs> is the leader of the Conservative Party not getting his security clearance? So funny, because it would muzzle them. You dorks. Mute the mic. Mute the mic. I dare you. He's read the petition. The leader of the opposition. Because this prime minister will not gag me the way he's gagging his 24. <laughs> W's down for that. Oh my goodness. Our country into a playground for foreign interference. He's unleashed crime chaos on our streets and corruption inside our government. My question, which he's erratically trying to avoid, is why does he keep covering up the criminal evidence in a $400 million green slush fund scandal? Why? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, 
the Leader of the Opposition is about to get up one more time in this House uh, to uh, say some words. I recommend that this, at this point he choose those words to apply to explaining to Canadians why he will not get the necessary security clearance from our national intelligence agencies to be able to protect not just his party and their institutions and their members, but all Canadians. Any leader who wants to take national security seriously should be able to listen to the information that CSIS wants to share them instead of covering his ears and going la 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 like order order the Honourable Member from Wellington Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, I'll tell you the briefing the Leader of the Opposition will take. He'll take the same kind of briefing the Washington Post got on classified information from the National Security and Intelligence Advisor and the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. He'll take the same briefing that I got under Section 12.1 of the CSIS Act, Threat Reduction Measures to Reduce Threats to the Security of Canada. He'll take the same classified briefing that the Prime Minister has been all too willing to give to this House when it suits him such as the classified information he revealed about Mr. Najjar's killing a year ago and other classified information revealed in the last several weeks about India. That's the kind of briefing the Leader of the Opposition will take. Wow! Good Feeney, mute the mic! Mute the mic, I dare you! You son of a gun! You know you want to. You know you want to. Mute the mic. Mute the mic. Mute the mic. Order. Order. Mute the mic. Nuke the mic. The right honorable point. Muke, muke the mic. Mr. Speaker. Lakelands. The honorable member from Lakelands. The right honorable prime minister. Mr. Speaker. We just saw an excellent example of the partisan links conservatives will go. He's read my petition. He's read my petition. 100% he's read my petition. Their leader refuses to take national security questions seriously. He has repeatedly refused offers by our national security agencies to give him the necessary clearances to be able to see the scope and breadth of threats to Canadians through foreign interference. He pretends to take issues of national security seriously, but it's only for partisan purposes, not for protecting Canadians. Shame on He's read my petition. 